After back Yanmar, it is now Kengen Ashura's turn to receive a custom program. And of course, as the tradition of these episodes of Can You Look Like Your Favorite Manga Character in Real Life dictates, I had to go with a protagonist. Not only is Tokita Oma the hero of the story, he's also got a very aesthetic physique that a lot of people would be more than happy to achieve. Unlike a lot of characters from the Kengan verse, his body is not something that I would consider unreachable for natural lifters. At around 6 feet, he weights in at 187 pounds or 85 kilograms, with relatively low body fat. If you compare that to the other monsters of the series or even to Baki, who had similar stats while being almost a foot shorter, his physique appears very realistic in terms of overall size. Of course, being this muscular would be a tall order for a martial artist who focuses more of his efforts on becoming a better fighter. Besides steroid users, combat sport professionals have always showcased less sculpted physiques, favoring performance over cosmetics. This mismatch is made evident by the fact that Oma is never shown lifting weights or doing resistance training. He got this big strictly by practicing the Nico style and doing some bodyweight exercises here and there. In real life, this would never be enough to get your muscles to grow to this level, so it shouldn't come across as a shock that the training program I'm going to detail today doesn't include any underwater shadow boxing. As always with martial arts series, the results rarely match the training, as the characters are made to be as buff as possible for the sake of visual appeal, even when they don't train for bodybuilding. For the same reason, I will not be including standard cardiovascular exercises in the regimen, Rather, I will be telling you when and where you can do cardio if you feel so inclined. For the sake of accuracy, let me also say right now that the version of Oma I will be focusing on today is the one from before the Annihilation Tournament. The reason for that is simple. Tokita seems to have gained almost 40 pounds of muscle between the time he stepped on the boat and when he landed on Mitsudo's island. While there is ample hope for anyone to achieve the body he had for his fight against Rihito, the one he showcases for his first official match in the tournament is a different story altogether. With his 8-pack, a core that looks to be sculpted from marble, and arms that seem to have doubled in size, he straight up looks like a professional bodybuilder jacked up on hormones. And that's not even mentioning the cannonball darts and impossibly thick chest. This version of Oma, while amazing to witness in the context of the manga, is not a realistic representation of what you can achieve and will therefore not be used as a reference. For the same reason, I'm not going to base this video on the form he turns into when he takes an advance, as this always leads to him doubling in size and developing veins out the wazoo. Since you're not going to be able to replicate that technique, I'll skip it altogether. Unless, of course, you're some sort of superhero in hiding, in which case you've got better things to do than to watch this video, and probably don't need it in the first place. But since the topic of modifying your heartbeat to boost your blood pressure and augment your physical abilities is interesting, you can count on me to make a video about it in the future. When looking at Tokita Oma's physique, the first word that comes to mind is aesthetic. He's got a relatively thin waist with wide shoulders and a lot of muscular development in his upper body. The good news is that his frame is not exaggerated to the point of being unnatural. Even if you don't have an amazingly gifted V-taper, you can still strive for that look. His obvious strong points are his chest, abs, and biceps, with his traps and shoulders lagging slightly behind. Overall, the thing to keep in mind with Oma is that he's top-heavy and that the front of his body is extremely dominant compared to the back. On top of that, he is wide but not super thick, which gives his physique a more streamlined and sophisticated aspect. Compared to Baki, who looks like an absolute unit because of his short segments, Tokita is more on the calisthenic athlete side. Don't be surprised, then, if his training program involves a lot of bodyweight movements. Paired with a relatively low body fat percentage, this gives him a very athletic look that can sometimes make him appear less imposing in closes. Like most lean guys, he disappears when he has a hoodie on, but seems to double in size once he takes his shirt off. However, the same can't be said for his legs, which still appear small even when he's not wearing pants. As a result, his training regimen will not be focused on lower body development at all. 
In fact, I'm not even going to include squats and deadlifts in it. It doesn't mean that you can't do them if you want to, but if you're shooting for a Tokita Oma type of physique, it won't be necessary. I'm still going to have you do some leg exercises, but they will be few and far between. Same goes for isolation movements. Oma has almost no long head of the triceps, and his forearms, while muscular, are still small. The only exception will be curls, since he rocks some serious guns that cannot be achieved strictly via chin-ups. To match his look, your number one goal will be to grow your chest and core using horizontal presses and ab isolations, with the shoulders, traps, biceps and upper back coming in second. Keep those priorities in mind, because the program I am about to present to you right now is based entirely off of them. I created two versions of that program, one with a barbell and a bench and one without. I understand that not everyone has access to a gym right now and therefore I want to make sure that most people can run that program without any issues. So the very first template is the one with a barbell and a bench. So you will have to have access to these equipments to be able to do that. And just like with the second template, it is an upper, lower, upper, full body template. Which means you're going to focus entirely on the upper body twice a week. You'll have one day where you do lower, and the other day is going to be a full body where you do some leg movements, and then a few movements of variations and accessories again for the upper body. So the first day, that we're going to call upper one, starts with a bench press, so you're going to work your horizontal press for your chest. You follow that up with a dumbbell press, which is a vertical press for the shoulders, superseded with a weighted chin up. After that, it's going to be curls, plus hanging knee raises for the abs, and face pulls. You'll see that the program has a lot of face pulls, because you're going to do a lot of presses, and therefore you need to balance the training of your shoulders, and train the rear delts and the trapezoids, because if you don't, you're going to have shoulder issues, so don't skip your face pulls. And as far as what you do them with, you can use a resistance band. The last sets are going to be push-ups, lateral raises, and calf raises. So that's a very solid first day. Your chest, your triceps, your shoulders are going to be completely hammered, and these are the areas that you need to develop if you want to look like Omar. The second day, the lower day, starts with good mornings, which you're supposed to do with a bar and weights, and I'm having you do 6 to 12 reps so that you don't do anything stupid, you don't injure your lower back. It's going to be very challenging on the glutes, the armstrings, and that's going to be plenty for your development because Oma has small legs, so if you want to shoot for his type of physique, you don't need big legs. Follows that up with lunges for high reps to get a good pump in the quads to do a knee flexion and get some development there. You don't need to do squats on that program, and you can superset them with pull-ups with body weight only because the day prior to that you did weighted chin-ups, so your lats are going to be tired. And we finish on that day with finger curls, 4 sets of 8 to 12. The third upper day starts with an overhead press, so that's your vertical press, with a lot of volume actually, 4 sets of 6 to 10, followed by a pose bench, more horizontal press, simply because you want a big chest and therefore you need to press a lot, superset with face pulls for the health of the shoulder. And then we follow that up with preacher curls to develop these biceps, bent over lateral raises and calf raises. As you've seen, I have you do some variations of stuff, it's not always standing curls. Sometimes you do them standing, sometimes sitting. As I'm showing you right there, you can do them uh, sitting, it's not a problem. You don't need a real preacher curl to do that. For the fourth day, which is going to be the full body day, you start with reverse lunges for a lot of volume as well, and you superset that with chest flies. After that, you're going to do weighted pull-ups again, but this time with a pronated grip, not a chin-up grip, and you superset that with as many push-ups as you can. The week is going to end with a giant set of tricep extensions, face pulls, and leg raises. The program is quite compact, it doesn't have you stay in the gym for hours and hours and hours, and it's only four times a week. Again, because you don't have to do deadlifts and squats, so that's a big advantage. The second template, the one that doesn't require a barbell or a bench, is extremely similar. The only difference is that the exercises that would have required that equipment are replaced by something else. For example, the bench press is replaced by push-ups, which if you are going to do push-up for your main movement for the chest, you're going to have to do a hard variation because it needs to be challenging. Most of the movements that require dumbbells or barbells can be replaced by bended movement, where you just do the same exact pattern but with an elastic band. And overall you will get a similar development with the only difference being that it's going to be much tougher to be intense with that method because you're not going to be able to load a bar. 
it can be an issue for progression in the long run, but if you're just getting started, it's not going to be a problem. You're still going to make good gains from that program. And in terms of scheduling, since you train four times a week, it's up to you to decide when the days are going to take place. I would highly recommend that you give yourself some time in between upper one and lower because as you've seen, upper one is quite difficult. It's going to be very taxing on your body. So something that you could do is you do upper one on Monday. You could do your lower on Wednesday. You can do your upper three on Thursday or Friday and you could do your full body or Saturday on Sunday. If you do your upper three on Thursday, you can do the full body on Saturday. Just give yourself one day of rest in between. Again, since it is four days, you can, if you want, have a rest day between each. You can also do the lower day, followed immediately by the upper day, because they work completely different muscles. However, you're not going to be able to have the upper day, the third upper day, followed immediately by the full body. I think that you might still find yourself to be a little bit too tired to do that. And therefore, you're going to have to adapt based on your ability to recover. This program is fairly minimalistic in nature. And so you might have to add extra volume to it at some point using additional sets of variations that will complement your main movements. If you want to learn more about how to program for progression, check out the playlists and explore the channel. There is a lot of info available. As long as you put in the effort, you'll make great progress following this training regimen. While it might not be best suited for beginners, it still remains within the reach of novices because of its simplicity. But keep in mind that this amount of work might be tough to handle for some. In this case, jump on the Bakian Macalisthenics program first, then transition to this one. Since you don't have to train your legs much, the sessions are short. This straightforward approach should allow you to stick to it without feeling discouraged, as the program focuses mainly on the upper body. However, don't forget that to reach your goal physique, you're going to have to put in efforts. Real life is not an anime, and even if we draw inspiration from them, we're not manga characters. Set your sights on the future, and with patience and hard work, you too can achieve a physique like Oma. Better yet, it is entirely in your power to surpass it and shoot for even higher heights. Godspeed, fellow weeb, and may your passion for lifting and anime never waver. <laughs>